It's been a while since I've been terrified of my own death in the fiery pits of hell, only after being dismembered by a roaming pack of communists. Good thing Estes Perkle is here to tell me that the pathway to heaven is paved with the bodies of dead children with sticks through their ears. The Believer's Heaven was the third and final chapter in the Estes Perko Ron Orman trilogy of Grindhouse religious films, the other two being the communist scare film If Footmen Tire You, What Will Horses Do?, and the fire scare film The Burning Hell. Released in 1977, The Believer's Heaven is the least popular of the three films, probably because it's the least violent. Oh, but don't worry, this sermon about the good news of heaven and all of its riches still has plenty of child death in it. The film being the least popular also means that it's the hardest Perkle film to find. But don't worry, bootlegs do exist, as well as DVDs sent directly from the ministry itself, and this copy assures me that it is in English. <laughs> That's debatable. Although the poster guarantees something epic, after all, the movie was photographed on five continents. Yes, the continents of Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, Louisiana, and Mississippi again. I'm just kidding, I'm sure they got themselves thrown out of many countries. If this movie really does feature Jabba's Palace ascending to heaven, it really will be a most astonishing picture. Also, you left a the out of your title. I'm starting to get used to that. I just pray that this series hasn't jumped the shark. Must every great franchise end up in outer space? Jesus said, In my father's house are many mansions. And this is where the captain's log starts losing me. The film is the story about how Abraham Lincoln won the Civil War against a Roman centurion. Plus, it was nice of Jimmy and Becky Luther to take turns playing duet. I just can't believe they got the No Moors and the Cherubims to be in the same room. They're the Montagues and Capulets of Red Scare films. And here's the others who helped. I guess we should probably mention them. We forgot Bill Kirby's name! Uh, just put it towards the bottom. But we also forgot hundreds of other names! No time, just start the movie! The credits are no excuse for Estes not to prematurely begin his sermon. This massive universe, which you and I are now living, is headed toward a dramatic climax. Oh, this is my third Estes Perkle movie. I'm always expecting a dramatic climax. Will you come? Will you come? Will you come? You know the rules, Estes. First, you have to wine me, dine me, and show me graphic images of mass murder, and then I'll come. Anyway, on with the origin of Peanut Butter Crunch. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. When that event takes place, I will not be living here. I'll be living in the Caribbean, enjoying my retirement. But not before he tells us about heaven. Heaven, the place where the Lord God Almighty dwells. Heaven, the place where angelic beings with great delight carry out the will of the Lord. They say in heaven, love comes first. We'll make heaven a place on earth. I must say, this is the clearest quality of the Perkle Ormond movies, in that it doesn't quite look like it's been jerked off to a hundred times by a Deep South serial killer who sleeps in human skin. Even Estes's glasses and suit look more expensive. Those are glasses that say, why yes, I did father the cinema snob. And a suit that says, I'll get you into heaven, but the Lord wants you to sign over your bank account. Given that this is a film about the wonders of heaven, I'm sure only positive things will follow. village in Central America is going to be melted alive by the earth. Now it's near identical to the Mississippi town that Estes preaches in. The hell have I gotten myself into? 
Hungry children search longingly for their parents. Oh, man, heaven looks depressing. Estes Perkle wants you to know that just because you're watching a movie about heaven doesn't mean you won't get a mass grave of dead children. Do you still feel that you have no time to think about heaven? You just showed me the Earth committing genocide. I don't believe in anything anymore. Even Estes' public speaking style has changed a little as he frequently poses like he's ready to fly off into the sky and spread pixie dust. This movie is somehow going to involve the rapture, isn't it? Well, that lightning cleared up awfully fast. The sky is telling me that it's now dawning of the age of Aquarius. You know, I had my doubts about our mass suicide, but it turns out it's pretty nice up here on Halley's Comet. Like other Estes Perkle movies, this one also comes with guest speakers. Several years ago, in the city of Henderson, Texas, I walked into a store. <laughs> Does your grandmother know you borrowed her glasses? This, by the way, is Dr. Jack Hiles, an independent Baptist minister, mostly known for his decades worth of sexual assault scandals, not only involving banging his secretary, but also humongous cover-ups involving child molestation within his organization, gang rapes, and a lawsuit about the cover-up of a six-year assault on a mentally challenged woman. In other words, Dr. Jack Hiles is not in heaven. Here, let's distract you with a reenactment of a scene from Sodom and Gomorrah the last seven days. All right, Pilgrim, look all around from where you are toward the north. Yeah, yeah. Well, it ain't Billy Graham, yeah. Pilgrim. You and all your man-children must be circumcised. Hack some hide off the end of your pecker. Well, surprisingly, this film doesn't have castration, but it does have acid trips. <laughs> And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. Wouldn't you have liked to have been in on that trip? Dude, do you know how many drugs I have to take to sit through an Estes Perkle movie? I'm already on a trip. Now we get the story of Abraham. Back then, there were no flailing arm balloon men, so we had to put on clean sheets and promote our used cars ourselves. Meanwhile, Merlin the Magician is keeping with his strict fruit diet. If Abraham looks stressed, it's because the actor Carl Lackey also played Abraham in The Burning Hell. He's seen some shit. This guy, though, he's okay. He's director Ron Ormond's son, Tim. He's used to all this. God has a plan for Abraham. There is just one true God, and it is he that spoke to me. He told me you should keep wearing a hat that looks like the tip of a dog's dick. This scene goes on so long that Abraham started out with short brown hair. I think his look has something to do with him getting the Santa Claus. Eh, everlasting life, everlasting scene, what's the difference? Everlasting life. Bah! Fuck Christmas! So Abraham decided to leave his palace and promote his new invention, hot tea. And the women worked equally hard doing their chores. We're working equally as hard, boys. She doesn't know how rough we have it. This tea doesn't have any sweetener. Soon they will all arrive in heaven, especially Jacob. He's played by Estes Perkle's son, Greg, still reeling from that whole decapitation thing from Footman. None shall pass. Ah, just kidding. Come on in, you polyphonic sons of bitches. We're having our 12th straight viewing of Albert Brooks's Defending Your Life. I just can't escape the fact that he looks like he wants to ask me for an extra $20 donation simply to finish a sentence. Anyway, Jacob's gotten into Merlin's stash of mystical wonders. He's in for a rough ride. Uh, this is either heaven or Manos the Hands of Fate. This whole movie is just a commercial for hallucinogens. Coincidentally, this is also how Menachem Golan views heaven. This would be a great double feature with the apple. Isn't it wonderful to know that God has provided angels to watch over his own? No, it's not great. I don't want to picture transparent men aimlessly wandering around above me while I'm trying to jerk off. Now the story of Elijah, who is trying his hardest to grow a beard as mighty as Abraham's, but he can't seem to find a place to plug in his straightener. 
They knew they would never see such a sight again. In just a moment, Elijah would be gone. Ooh, a budget. Now he's off to heaven. Oh no, there was a gas leak on my heaven teleporter. Fetch me a pail of water. What a magnificent way to go to heaven. While in flames? I don't know. This movie is starting to feel a little cultish. Earth toiling. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. and Mrs. Mom and Dad. I see the Fantastic Mercy took some risks with their second album, but I greatly prefer their Mr. No Legs LP. At least one of them was smart enough to wear protective glasses when staring into the sun. We're looking to our right now, our right. Stop staring at the camera. The cast of hair is doing their encore. That fair old man will not Woodstock was even awkward before they all started fucking. And now another guest speaker. Does this one also have a rap sheet? But the Lord Jesus said, If you believe in God, believe also in me. Yeah, but Jesus is biased. He grew up in the mean streets of heaven. This is Dr. Adrian Rogers, and I don't see anything about any sex scandal, but he did support a boycott of Disney due to their homosexual agenda. So in other words, he's gay. I will come again and receive you unto myself. Estes is also using this movie as his audition for Lifestyles of the Rich and Heavenly. The dining room. The bedrooms. All of this can be yours if you dial 1-800-WILL-YOU-COME. I love how a mansion in heaven still needs a security system. And look, even Nixon is here. Plus, you'll get these amazing map paintings. It's taken three films, but we finally get what we've been waiting for. An origin of Estes Perkle himself. I grew up in the Depression years in the home of Grover Washington Perkle, along with three brothers and six sisters. <laughs> so, no birth control in the Perkle household, huh? My memory includes wash day with the old-fashioned wash pot. Wait a minute, this is just the plot of the jerk. I know you want to ask me, Preacher, were you really born a poor black child? And I will say to you, the Lord loves a working man, and see a doctor and get rid of it. The games we had to play were very simple, like a chiny bear fight with other brothers and sisters. We played checkers in front of the fireplace. Half of my brothers and sisters committed suicide at the age of 12 due to boredom. Mmm, such a Sunday feast. It's even causing Estes' audience to belch. I would not have exchanged places with the richest people. Most of the crowd seems really excited, except this person who clearly thought they were going to a disco. Sometimes I think these movies have gotten sentient and are now talking directly to me. Because each of us has accepted Jesus as personal savior. Then the family circle will be complete again. Ah, uh, does he know I'm making fun of him? I'm so lost that I could be an audience member. Oh my god, he's talking so fast! I'm so lost, so lost! I'm um, something, something, burning flesh! Must not think about fiery razor burn on my face. The audience in the movie's sketches are creepy on a Sea King level from Fun in Balloon Land. <laughs> They're gonna sacrifice that child, aren't they? Back to making fun of the congregation, Mama Cass is enthralled. See, Earl? I made it to the end and it says nothing about married cousins going to hell. Then again, I can't read. By the way, heaven is a photo booth at Sears. But how much more restful it will be when we arrive in that eternal country and are resting beside the Crystal Sea. Is the Crystal Sea right next to the giant photograph of palm trees? Now for the next speaker, the back of some guy's head. This is J.O. Grooms, author of Treasure Path to Soul Winning, which you can buy for the low cost of a thousand dollars. 
The hell kind of speech is this guy going to give? Buy my book! Buy my book! Buy my book! Oh, well, that makes sense. And now for the story of the man trapped on the island of pasty white man calves. Can't stop staring at Centurion's can puncturing tooth. The Lord Jesus Christ was with him and allowed him to see what no mortal man had ever seen before. I've seen Zardoz. Ah, giant coloring book straight from heaven. You hear that, audience? Yes, coloring. Yes. And here's a man who's pissed off at the prospect of doing basic math in his head. This makes the New Jerusalem over seven million times bigger than New York City. Does this excite you? Too close, Estes! I should listen, for Estes Burkel has the silver card membership into heaven. He saw a throne, and on the throne was the Lord God Almighty. And what a sight it must have been for the 24 elders seated around the throne. Truly, they are all the Burger Kings. Oh, God damn it! must you set everything on fire, Estes? They soon give up their crowns upon realizing they are definitely made of plastic. Wow, everyone is invited into the kingdom of heaven. From all ages and times they arise. From North America, South America, Europe, Asia, Africa. Ah, <laughs> just kidding. We're all white here. Good white Southern God-fearing white folk. Now where is that God our Father I've been hearing so much about? Welcome home, beloved of God. Thanks, Odin. Heaven's about as humbling as a gentleman's club, which also doesn't seem to accept blacks or Jews. Welcome to a place where death cannot come. Welcome to a place where loneliness is never felt. Welcome to a place where night never comes. Yes, that's nice. Do you have a white castle around here? And am I to understand that if you're a night person, you're sent to hell? But we now have some real insight into heaven from a man who I'm pretty sure is clinically dead. All the words of the wisest of men, most skillfully combined and most eloquently spoken, could not fully set forth the wonder, the wealth, and the beauty of heaven. And where are my pants? Have you seen my pants? I just want to shit in my pants. This is Robert G. Lee. It's nice that he turned to the Lord after commanding the Confederate States Army. You know, it's been a while in this movie since we've seen open grave sites. I'm beginning to worry about that. That there shall be no more death messages, no more funeral processions, no more flowers on cold slabs, no more mass burials from some catastrophic event. <laughs> so no Estes Perkel movies in heaven? But is there an Alexander Steakhouse without mood-killing phone calls? There was a bad fire, Walter, and it was your house. Everything was lost. Everything. We couldn't save a thing. No news like that will ever spoil our good times in heaven. Not with heaven's state-of-the-art security system! Anyway, the movie's cameraman is passed out drunk in the alley. Let's continue on with the sermon. You never know where these Estes Perkel movies are going to lead. Soon he shall call me. I care not when or where this chair I leave behind. Give me wisdom to help others, I pray. Uh, I don't know, the greatest showman doesn't seem that bad. Is it just me, or is this movie becoming self-aware about its inbreeding audience? Again we read, neither shall there be any more pain for the- Oh, come on! Does this audience really look like this? You've heard of Minnie Kiss, so I guess Minnie Miss Velma is the natural progression? That won't even prepare you for Estes parading out sick children to sing in front of the camera. I'm going to 
would take a wild guess and say that they'd probably prefer not to be singing in public for a film directed by an exploitation filmmaker. So the point here is that everyone's illness will be cured in heaven, since heaven has the best makeovers. This woman was not. See? In an instant, they'll take all of that shitty old person makeup off of you. Yes, thank you, Estes. You've shown us this haul about five times now. I guess that's where most of your budget went. Wow, the semen room seems very, very smelly. Very smelly. But people, we still have kaleidoscopes in heaven. And while there may not be nighttime, in heaven, the moon is still in the seventh house and Jupiter still lines with Mars. Ooh, I see vegetarians are welcome. That'll make the Christian cows happy. Can you imagine the delicious taste of fruit grown in heaven? That isn't heaven. Poison. Estes took a wrong turn on his way to Eden. I don't know why, but I now have the urge to smash an acoustic guitar. There will be no one or anything to ever interrupt the peace and love of heaven. Does this not make you want to go to heaven? I'm pretty sure that I can still have toga parties here on Earth. And despite spending the entirety of the last movie on it, he talks about hell once again. Oh, I turned Jesus down as my savior because I was afraid of what my friends would say if I became a Christian. Okay, maybe this is why it's Estes' last movie. He's resorted to doing a clip show on his greatest hits. At least your afros will be absolute perfection in hell. It's showing us all the types of people who end up in hell, so I'm preparing for another Jack Hiles appearance. Are those the types of companions you desire to have forever? Which will it be for you? Hell or heaven? I have an allergy to fine linens. I'll take my chance in hell. I wonder if this church has more polyester, crustaches, or underwear skid marks. I don't want to find out. This whole congregation is like a walking rack of clothes at a Goodwill. You can tell an Estes movie is nearing conclusion when they all begin approaching the bench. But unlike the other two movies, there's no conversion subplot, like with poor Judy in the first film and the director's son in the burning hell. And now, let me say a word to you who are watching this film. I've already come twice. You don't need to ask me again. It's your last moments on film, Estes. Make them count. This could be God's last call to you. Will you bow your head with me in prayer? Oh good, my prayers came true! The movie's over! <laughs> no joke, that's the end of the film. Because like the others, it ends abruptly with no ending credits. The working relationship between director Ron Ormond and Estes Perkle lasted six years between 1971 and 1977, with this being their final film together, citing heavy disagreements in their business relationship, not to mention the Believer's Heaven didn't receive near the financial success of their previous two films. But Estes continued on with his ministries until his death in 2005, and Ron Ormond directed one other movie after this, the 1979 film 39 Stripes, a conversion story about a criminal turned prison minister. These films brought us back to a simpler time where you could stare at sick children, witness burning flesh, mass graves, commie executions, and also learn about Jesus. So to close out this sermon, here's another hymn from the mamas and the papas and the cousins and the second cousins and the third cousins. Yeah.